I'm basically a designer and engineer and I love that overlap where engineering and design come together. In other words, total holistic product design. Uh, I hate it when they're separated because products are a combination of the two. Uh, that's the fascination. But whenever I'm working with clients on their projects, I always ask them, what are the products would they need? Or what are the, just with a blank sheet of paper, what would be the perfect killer product which would make, transform their business or their market? Even if it doesn't exist at the moment, and even if it sounds impossible. In other words, I sort of try and tease out of them challenges. And I think they probably know the market better than I do because they're trying to sell to buyers and buyers to end users the whole time. And so, you know, I'm sure people will say, uh, you know, I want a paint that dries instantly. You know, why can't I have it? And, you know, I want a bicycle that weighs nothing or I want an electric car that does 200 miles and only costs £2.50 or whatever. And take those impossible challenges and see, well, is it that impossible? And, and, and look at it that way. That's, that's one way. And the other way is just things that fascinate me. I think one of the nice things about being a, an inventor or a designer or an engineer is that theoretically you have a stream of royalties coming in which frees you up to work on projects which are close to your heart. And for me that's the bicycle projects because they don't really make much money. Very few people in the bicycle industry do make money. But I think bicycles as human amplifiers are really fascinating products and I, I, I would like to see them being used more um, as they are in places like Holland. I actually do find the sort of kinematics of that transformation personally fascinating. Um, and so that's what does draw me to folding products. But to take that a step further, I think they can actually be useful. You know, for example, things that are really big and, and, and clumsy to use, if you can fold them down into something smaller and more portable, they actually become more beneficial for the end user. Hence, you know, things like folding bikes. Well, the reason folding bikes had small wheels in the first place was to try and get them to fold as small as possible which is great. They, they do that and they're very successful at doing that. But if you look at any, any international city, whether it's London, New York or whatever, and watch people actually riding bicycles, 90 plus percent of them choose to ride full-size wheel bikes. Now, it could be because they feel, to them, more stable. It could be because they prefer the appearance. It could be because they don't want to see, they don't want to appear like they're riding a, a, a toy or a child's bike. There could be all sorts of reasons. But one thing that I think is very significant in transforming people's attitudes to, you know, say, use bicycles when they previously didn't, is the image use of such products projects. And I think if, if you watch what people sort of want and try and give them what they want and better, in other words, in this case, a full-size folding bike that also folds down into something quite manageable and something you don't have to carry and wheel along, it's sort of, it's giving them what they want and benefits, which is what I think inventing is all about. My first computer was a Mac 2. And very soon after it was launched, there was a wonderful little program called Swivel 3D, which I still fondly remember and miss, because you could make anything in 3D really quickly and also animate it. So for someone like me who like, likes making sort of like folding structures and things that do all this, it was a perfect little CAD package. It wasn't super accurate, so in other words, you couldn't use it for CNCing, but to develop ideas, and also, also to present them as visuals, it was, it was super. Uh, I don't think, uh, maybe the nearest equivalent today is maybe SketchUp, uh, but there isn't a sort of a really simple, quick and dirty mechanical CAD tool, I don't think. My process is basically thinking of something like in a lot of depth, like immersing myself in it and then getting the ideas down on paper. And the best way of that is, is pencil and paper. 
But then, uh, as soon as something is starting to crystallize, make a very crude 3D CAD model to get the sort of real physical sizes um, down on, on, on paper, on, <laughs> on the CAD screen. Um, because, because then uh, you've got the key constraints. The downside to sketching with a pencil is you can kid yourself. You can sort of say, oh yeah, that'll work, of course it will. And then, and then, then you put dimensions in and it d d doesn't work. So, and then I use a combination of CAD and sketching because you have a, a, a CAD model and it might, not, it might be a, an aesthetic model, it might be a series of gears or something complicated. And to change something is actually, you know, it takes a few minutes. It's still quick, but it takes a few minutes. Whereas to sketch on top of it takes seconds. And when, you're, when your ideas are flowing like 10 a minute, you don't have the luxury of minutes to redesign, even if you're just stretching it. Whereas a sketch on top is, is really fast. And then later, as, the, as a concept gets more and more developed and, and becomes nearer to a, 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 a sort of, you know, beta point zero, uh, <laughs> say a product becomes like beta point one, um, then the CAD system becomes really useful because you can start simulating things. And for example, anything that folds, having a CAD simulation of that folding action is, is awesome because the previous way of doing that was with little models, sketch models and things. And to make a change to say one of the linkages, you had to re-solder it or re-screw it. Whereas on CAD, it's sort of like click, click, <laughs> it's changed. And so you can do lots of iterations, which, is, which I think one of the really main benefits of CAD. And then from then on, it's using the same data to make things, to then test them, to then make them again. And because it's based on the same data set, if you improve the data set until the same data set goes to production. Um, so it, it becomes a sort of seamless process after that initial sketching stage.